Okay, I think it's perfect timing for us to start, so we optimize our time. You are welcome to Tech Biz Transformation Series. Every Thursday, 5 p.m. Nigerian time, we do this. In any case, Tech Biz is about your growth and the growth of your business. So it's excellent that we're now talking about growth strategies and growth plans. I'm Doja, Doja Ikeruche. You know me, I'm a marketing strategist. I'm experienced in building brands, building businesses, and uh, I've done this in, in many countries. So uh, you can reach out to Eco Innovation Center, info at uh, ecoinnovationhub.com. If you have any question, any comments, any improvements that you want on the platform or any help that you need, please feel free to shoot us an email. Hashtag TechBees, hashtag EcoInnovation. Feel free to post your comments. All right, so to, I want to talk to you about TechBees Nation. Remember last week we were talking about networking. If you missed it, that episode was just on fire. If you missed it, ecoicenter.com forward slash webinar. Just go in there, you'd see, you can download the video, you can also download the presentation. No man is an island, we need our networks. That presentation tells us how to build a thriving network. And it was the same time that we launched Tech Biz Nation. And Tech Biz Nation, the whole idea is to support and fuel your growth and fuel the growth of your organization. It's an engagement platform. We share developmental updates. We, we discuss. It's really about communal growth, right? And it's creating a community that wins and thrives together. The community is housed on, on Telegram. For all those who have already filled the, you filled the form online to join, right now we're reviewing all of the requests to join and then uh, you will be added into, into the groups. We want to connect. We want to collaborate, we want to build. When we say connect to conquer, you want to conquer in the market. Conquer your competition and conquer, of course, any kind of business hurdles that you may face. We collaborate together because we want to win together and build to last because we want to build sustainable companies. Okay, so we want to now talk very in-depth about creating growth plans. And of course, you know, we've heard it, we've heard about growth plans. For me, what, one thing that keeps striking me is they say that less than 50% of startups actually live up to their fifth year, which means that companies start up or enterprises start up, but they don't survive. What is that one thing that you need to do to make sure that you're sustainable, to make sure that your business is not just a flash in the pan. For me, the real answer is you create a winning growth strategy, a winning growth plan for your business. So anyway, to do justice to creating a growth plan and guiding us on how to create a growth plan, I want you to welcome Tonia. Tonia Shodunke, she's going to be the one talking about growth plans. Okay, thank you very much for having me. Um, should I say happy independence to everybody and happy new month. So straight into what we have for the day, growth plans for startups. Well, I like to start with this quote that says, okay, growth is never by mere chance. Yeah, it is the result of forces working together. So now what this actually tells us is the fact that you have to be intentional. One of the laws I work very, very consistently with is the law of intention. You have to be intentional. If not, you cannot achieve your aims. So the truth is that um, for you to grow any business from one level to the other, you have to be intentional. You need to know that there are so many things that need to be put in place. <laughs> Someone said something one day and I grabbed it. It said the only thing that grows without um, intention is weed. And guess what? Weed is totally, at least to a large extent, is useless to every one of us. So if you know that what you want to grow is not weed, then you have to be very intentional. You have to understand that this thing I'm on needs a lot of intention. And I'm going to be working with so many strategies, so many people, so many things have to work hand in hand together. So, this evening, we'll be running through four stages of business growth. Um, 
I want us to understand something that there are actual stages that we need to pass through. And if you understand the stage at which you are, it is easier for you to be more intentional with your action and the steps you take. The first step is the startup stage. Of course, this has to do with um, getting your business started, you know, getting it running from off the ground. And then the next stage is actually growth itself. Meaning um, sometimes we look at ourselves as we have actually, okay, fine, I've started. And they, they, there's this expectation of, there's this high hopes you want to just get there instantly. But you see the next phase is actually growth. You need to put a lot of things in place. So you have to be thinking, how do I scale my business to the next level? How do I get in new clients? How do I ensure that I have additional finances? And then the third stage is maturity. So if you've been able to survive the growth stage, and this is most, this is the reason why most um, startups actually die between one to five years. But if you are able to scale through the one to five years, then you're doing something right. So the maturity stage is when you have actually stabilized. And of course, you can now have the rich financial um, basis to begin to acquire other companies. And then we have um, the final stage, which is actually the renewal. Now, if, you, if we all recall vividly, we have First Bank. After some time, First Bank had to do some renewal strategies. They had to go back to the drawing board, they changed their logo, they changed um, their strategies, they infused newer and younger blood into the system. You know, they, they, they didn't have new minds to rub minds with. And you know, this helped First Bank to actually stay put. Because at that point in time, several other bank, banks were coming into the system and First Bank was beginning to shake. So it gets to a point where you actually need to renew your system. You need to go back to the drawing board and begin to re-strategize. And so you see at this point, there's a kind of reinvigorating of your business and succumbing you know, to new competition or changing conditions. Now it's either you are renewing or you are declining. So if you know you are not ready to decline, then we must all go on for renewal. Can I have the next slide, please? So sometimes it's quite confusing. People feel I, I, I must have crossed the first stage. So here's the deal here. I'll go through these questions and then you see for yourself, where exactly am I? Now, do you have enough customers to be viable? That's a question I want everybody in the house to answer this evening. Do you have enough resources to deliver your products on time? Can your services compete with the competitors or are you really profitable? Can you beat your chest to say, this is a profitable setup? Are you making profit where you are? So if you know that you are not achieving all this, now I'd like to throw this out to everyone who is on board already. Now with what I have put on here, how many people do we have that are actually in this space? You could just put up your hands or just um, a chat, put in the chat box, startup face. I just ran through the four stages. So which, Stages are you in? Which of these stages are you in? Next, please. Ah, I can see topmost college. Uh -huh, your hand is up. Okay, good. Now, the bottom line of all this is the fact that you must be ready to take risk. I know you don't, yeah, nobody needs to be told. You need to break free from your comfort zone if you must push your business to the next phase. We need to be able to explore new ideas. I mean, there is no way you start up a business from scratch and expect to be running with the new ideas. There must be innovation in place. Now, what am I doing right? Now, somebody said something, you don't go to war with strategies totally um, not caring or not minding about your opposition. So in this case, we have uh, the competition, the competitors. So you need to be able to understand what ideas am I bringing to the table? How do they stand out in the marketplace? Do I match up in any way to my competitors? And of course, by the time you keep going from one stage to the other, you should be able to formalize processes that you've been able to prove. You've proven that they work. 
And that makes the, the system easy for you to scale to the next space. Because definitely, we need to be able to go back to the drawing board at every point in time. Next, next slide, please. So we need to be able to go back to the drawing board and see, am I really making headway? Now, sometime last year, I had to sit down to write a book because I discovered that the butterfly has a life cycle that is absolutely so phenomenal when you talk about business. Because you see, when we start up as um, a new business, you come up with the idea. Yes, we say ideas rule the world. We are expecting that once we go out there in the market, the next thing we see is boom, a butterfly. But it's not that way. And you see, most times when you don't understand this growth plan, you can really get um, you can really get overwhelmed in the sense that what you are expecting to see is not what you're seeing. And at this point in time, you find people really feeling, okay, maybe my idea is not good enough. Maybe I, I really can't do this, or I'm not cut out for this. So I want to run us through the what I call the butterfly principle of business growth, and then we'll understand better. Next phase. Next slide, please. Now, the first stage is actually the egg stage. Of course, this is the ideation stage. This is the stage of conception. You need to be able to prove your idea out there in the market. How viable is your idea? Can it stand the test of time? Can that idea really move forward? Can it move your business forward? And then the very next phase is what I call the caterpillar stage. Remember I said most times we expect Okay, okay, thank you. Now, we expect that the minute we um, put launch the idea, we're expecting to see a butterfly. But no, most people get, um, um, they, they get discouraged because the first thing you see is a caterpillar. And the caterpillar is ugly. There's nothing beautiful about the caterpillar. But you see, at this point in time, we need to understand one thing very, very importantly. This is the next phase. And at this stage, we have very high consumption. The caterpillar eats and eats and eats, and it just keeps eating. It looks very crazy, but see, that's the face. Because at this point in time, you need to gather ideas. You need to be resourceful. You need to attend seminars. Now, that's why it's, in fact, I'm saying a big congratulations to everyone who is on this webinar today. Because this is one of the steps you need to take in order to grow your business. You need to I, I attend physical meetings, you know, go to conventions, rub minds, network. At this stage, you just need to stay hungry. You can never have enough information. Now it looks as if um, uh, the, the, the input is almost too much, but no. When you understand the stage you are in, because the next stage which we're gonna go into very soon, is actually um, the, 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 the caterpillar goes into a cocoon, the chrysalis stage. And at that point, it cannot feed. There's no room for feeding. And that's why at this point in time, you need to prepare yourself. You need to prepare yourself for the stages ahead. You need to plan. You need to be able to rub mind with your, um, with your, 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 your team. Now, at this stage, you need to understand that clarity is very, very important. When you're talking about putting a product or putting a service out there in the market, what, do you really have clarity about your product? Where does, what stage, as in, how does your uh, product fit into the marketplace? Someone said something that water seems common, but the very moment you decide to bottle water, that water has invariably picked its audience. So your audience is definitely going to be different. Do you actually know your audience? We have the elites, we have the middle class, we have the low class. Who are you here to serve? I want us to understand that this is a very important question. Many people are being run out of business because we don't even know the, 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 who we have been called to serve. If you don't have clarity about your customer, there will be issues. And that's why you must prepare yourself. And so another thing about the caterpillar is that it keeps, as it increases in size, it keeps changing its skin. So you must understand that change is inevitable. 
changes will come, but you need to be able to adapt. Your, your, the speed at which adaptation takes place is very, very important. Next slide, please. Now, the core features of this stage is the fact that you must be able to establish your value proposition. This is what I've just talked a bit about. What value are you bringing to the marketplace? How does it stand out in the face of your competitors? Because, see, we are in a, 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 an age where the noise is so much. The noise out there is so much. So if your voice cannot be heard loud and clear, then you might just be drowned out. So you need to establish your value proposition and be able to showcase it out there. Like I said, identify your ideal customer. Who exactly are you sent to? Then of course, you need to now sit down and define your key indicators. And that's why I say if you already have a team you're working with, even if it's just one person or two people, because now we're talking about startups, nobody's expecting you to start big. But even if it's just one or two people, you need to understand when you're making progress. Do you actually have key indicators to show that, fine, I've moved from the stage I was in previously to the next phase? I hope we're, we're following this evening. And as I, I run through these slides, I want us to really cast back our minds on our business. Begin to look at your business from different angles, from different faces, so that these key points can be infused into the system. You need to understand the key indicators. And that's why you see, I tell people that you need to have frequent meetings with your team. It can never be enough. The other day I was um, passing, driving by, and I saw a new store um, where fruits were being sold. I was like, wow, this is new. So I stopped by and, you know, I started talking with the ladies there, uh, the attendants, and I said, okay, fine. You know, they were pushing some foreign fruits at me. And I said, what precisely is the difference between this foreign orange and this normal local orange that we are used to here? And the lady looked at me for a moment, and then she said, um, it's sweeter. I said, are you kidding me? Is that the reason why I should spend extra to buy foreign oranges simply because it is sweeter? Okay, fine, what if I'm watching my weight and I'm not looking out for sweet things? And they were just dumbfounded, they were looking at me. And I was like, you need to understand this and that's why everybody has a phone. For heaven's sake, ask Google. Google is your best friend at any point in time. You can always get information from the web. And you see, the next time I was there, I met um, the CEO, and she was so, so well detailed. She was so amazing. I went there um, with an intention to spend a specific amount, and I ended up spending way, way more than that. First thing, she took me into the inner office, and I was like, wow, do you mean this place is like this? It was totally different from what the outside looked like. I mean, the furnishing, everything was top notch. And I was like, hey, you don't need to talk too much. Get your customers to step into this office and they will know that you're not here to play. This already is a strong point as far as you're concerned. So, you know, I told her the experience I had last time and she laughed. She said, in fact, just that month end, she had to throw away so many fruits because they had gone by, bad. So if you are even running a perishable business, that means you have to be on top of your game if you must make headway. This is not even talking about your competitors. You, have to, you must have strategies in place to push your business, your, your products out to the customers. And so you must learn to focus on your strengths. Of course, I know we all are used to the SWOT analysis, Conduct a SWOT analysis and see where you fall. Now, somebody said, whatever you focus on, you magnify. Whatever you focus on, you pull into existence. So if your focus remains pushing my business to the next level, that's exactly what you would get. Next slide, please. All right. Now, caterpillars shed their skin as they grow. So this is one strong advice I have for all entrepreneurs out there. Don't be afraid to shed what you've encountered so far. New is good, yes. And the only way to truly grow is to embrace changes. 
Next slide, please. So you must not be afraid. A lot will be thrown at you, but hey, that's the reason why you are out there. You must show yourself phenomenal. Now in the chrysalis stage, this is where I said the caterpillar gets to a point that's eating and eating has grown in size. It now begins to wrap itself round and you know, there's this, it forms that shell around itself and it stays in that cocoon for a very long time. Now at that point in time, it looks as if the caterpillar is dead. That's an end of the story. It looks at, as if it has come to the end of the road, but guess what? A lot is going on right inside the cocoon different growth stages are taking place. It is beginning to form its vital organs. So look at your business and see what you can eject. You see what precisely you need to grow with, what must go and what must stay. Now make sure you save enough from the early activity to see you through the quiet times. Now at this point in time, people may not even know that there's anything happening. It may look so quiet on every side and it looks as if the business is going down. But then you must be able to make changes. Get used to making changes slowly, you know, purposefully, defining every moment. Next slide, please. Now, as a mother, I got to understand this thing the hard way. There was a particular time my son was so sick, so ill. I mean, we took him to several hospitals. They ran several tests. It was an admission for long, and it was draining. It was terribly draining. And you know, the drugs, the injections, everything he had to go through. You know, when you're a mother, you feel the pain of the child. And you know, he was actually bedridden for quite some time. But guess what? When he became fine, and um, one of the Sundays, I felt, ah, oh, thank God. At least he's fine. Everything is okay please let's go to church. I've missed enough of church. And we went to, and you know, in the process of getting him dressed, guess what I noticed? The trousers were jumping. And I was like, oh my God. Now I was looking at the illness. I was, you know, so drained. I was confused. I was worrying. But guess what was happening? Growth was taking place. There are certain stages of growth that you will come across during a downturn. Guess what? The coronavirus seemed to have buried so many businesses out there. But I don't want anybody to give up on themselves. I don't know if anyone is having any issue with their business. Now, what you need to do at this point in time is look deep. What you may actually be um, experiencing is growth. It may look as if the business is sick. It may look as if the business is going down. But what is actually happening is that a new face is coming up and you must be conscious of this. Now, I don't know how many of us in the room right now may be having these issues with our businesses and you're about to throw in the towel. Now, what I've come to say is simply a message of hope to everyone out there. Your downturn, your downtime may actually be a time of growth. So rather than throwing in the towel, hey, dust yourself off the floor, dust yourself off the ground, off the sand. It is time for a new horizon. In fact, a new horizon is setting up if you are keen enough to see it. Next slide, please. Next slide. So now what I want us to understand is emerge from the cloud of preparation into the sunlight of opportunity. Someone said something during the, um, the lockdown that if you emerge from this lockdown with nothing different about you, about, you know, it mentioned different aspects of your life. If you are coming out of this lockdown and nothing has changed, then please go back. Because the truth is that the lockdown afforded us something, which is one thing that we entrepreneurs hardly do. You need to pause. Most times we're all about action. What next? What next? What strategies? What systems? What things should I put in place? But the truth is that there must be a time when you will pause, just stop for a while and assess yourself. 
analyze the things you've been able to achieve. Where am I? Have I made progress? Have I taken the right steps? The decisions I've made, have they moved me forward? Is my product gaining um, prominence, visibility in the marketplace? You need to be able to understand that there's sunlight of opportunity out there. But if you miss the preparation phase, you have missed it all. Now, when you're coming out of the preparation stage, you need to start thinking of partnerships to mate with, because this is what will launch you out to the next level. Now, what are the goals you have set at the beginning of the year? How well have you fared? Think of how you can actually continue the cycle with people you need to make things happen. You need to begin to network intentionally. Thank God the last session we had was networking. And I'm sure we gain a lot from that session because networking is also part of growth. If you are not able, your network is your net worth. So if you are not building a strong network, you're not growing in your networking, then you are failing. Next slide, please. So we need to understand when it's time for the butterfly stage, it is time to, it's time to fly. Now, let me tell you something very briefly that I also understood about the butterfly. Do you know that when it is time for the butterfly to come out of the cocoon, it's a very slow process. The butterfly struggles and struggles and struggles. In fact, there's a story about a man who saw a butterfly trying to come out of the cocoon. It was struggling so hard for hours. And he felt pity and decided to use a scissors to cut open the cocoon. Guess what? The butterfly came out, but the wings were all squeezed. And you know, it staggered and staggered for some few more hours and then it died. Do you know what? The struggle was actually nature's own way of pumping blood from the heart of the butterfly to the wings. And that's what strengthens the wings, dries up the, the wetness of the wings, and in no time, the butterfly is ready to fly. So I am bringing this same message back to the house. Rather than giving up on yourself, you need to be careful what partnerships you run into. You need to be careful what help you get. You need to be careful and very, very intentional. Now that man meant no harm, but then the struggles is part of the process. If you forget anything I'm saying today, struggle is part of the growth process. It is normal. It is normal. So you need to be more intentional. You see, take yourself out to lunch or dinner. Sit with yourself. You scrutinize your plans. Understand for yourself if you are actually making progress. Trust me, you will find the footage to gain ground to the next phase. So we're looking at core growth strategy plan, strategic plans for any business. We'll run through this very briefly and then we'll move on to the next phase. Now, marketing strategies. Now, the very first strategy I want us to pay attention to is market penetration. Now, when you're coming into the market with a, um, an, a new product, you need to understand the market. We've said a bit of this before. You need to understand how to push your products to the next level. You need to understand what is acceptable in the market where I am launching out into. Now, my product, is it really going to gain grounds? Is it going to stand out where the competitors are concerned? What exactly are you trying? You need to penetrate because guess what? So many people are already there. So why should your customers buy from you? They already have people they are buying from. So why should they stop and buy from me? Ask yourself that question. What good thing am I bringing to the table? I remember some time back when we started the business, Dunkin' Pepper recipe, it was actually an eatery then in Kano. And you see, there were so many other eateries that had gained ground. And it was, you know, launching out and penetrating the market was a big deal then. So we had to go back to the drawing table and begin to ransack our heads. I mean, what? else can we bring that will be new? And then we came up with this idea of having jazz. First, it started during the weekends and we noticed, boom, we had more customers. One week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, oh great, this is working. And so we had to pump more energy into it. We noticed that people just love the atmosphere. They would rather come to an atmosphere where they will sit down and be serenaded while they ate. 
So for us, it was a big deal. And with that, we were able to penetrate. One of the goals we had then was to make Dunkin Pepe a household name. And within a short period of time, we were able to branch out into Jigawa, that's Duse, and shortly after that, Abdelkuta, Ogun State simply because we got a particular plan that was working. So what precisely have you tried out and what have you noticed that is working? Now market expansion and development. You need to grow to a point where you begin to expand. You cannot stay in one market. You need to diversify. You need to, you, you, you need to um, spread your wings. You, there will come a time where you need to open up into new markets. And then you begin to pump in the energy. And then with the next piece, we have product expansion. The woman that sells um, bread by the roadside, that sees that people keep coming to buy bread, and then some people ask for butter, some other people ask for um, bean cake, akara, like it is popularly known, you know? So she decides. Why do I have to let these people keep going elsewhere to suck this? Why not bring it into my own marketing strategy? And so you see, product expansion has to do with you coming up with other things that you can use that will draw more markets to you. Your customers come to your supermarket, they can get every single good they need for their house, for their homes. Now, Dangote understands this. Dangote is able to serve so much. You know, he can, he's serving the elite, he's serving the middle class, he's serving the low class. Why? Because he has products. If you're not buying his cement, you're buying his sugar. If you're not buying his sugar, you're buying his spaghetti. If you're not buying his spaghetti, you're buying his salt. So before, you know, because this thing is a game of numbers. The more numbers you have, the more growth you will experience. And of course, the next phase is the diversification where you have to now broaden your um, horizon. Now, I'm sure we are all conversant with um, the Blue Sea and the Red Sea. You know, you're launching into Blue Sea. That's a concept where it's a new market. Blue Ocean Strategy. It's a new market that has not been penetrated. It's a new market. It might be a whole new idea coming up from you. But you see, the strategy you need in that particular uh, terrain is different from what you would need in the Red Sea, Red Ocean strategy, where the market seems saturated. So you need to get your voice to be heard. So I need us to begin to think right now, am I a product-based entrepreneur or a service-based entrepreneur? What can I do to move my marketing to the next phase? Next slide, please. Now, I hope someone is catching something new this evening because you see, these are all core strategies that we can infuse into our businesses that will definitely, I mean, definitely give you a boom. Now, the next is your customer attraction strategy. Now, what strategy do you really have to attract new customers? Now, whether we like it or not, growth is all about customers. The more customers you have, the more your finances will skyrocket. The more customers you have, the more your products, your services will move. The more customers you serve, the more visibility you will enjoy. The more customers you serve, the more your um, company name is going viral. So what exactly is the strategy that you have in place to draw in the customers. Now, I, I, I don't know how many of us are already conversant with the fact that um, the customers must know you, they must trust you, and they must see you as an authority in your niche. Now, let's take this, drive this back home. In my niche, how well known am I on a scale of one to 10? And what exactly am I doing to pull more customers? What exactly am I doing to make sure that, you see, more people are getting to know about my business? This is very important. Now, you need to understand that, okay, fine. There are different things I need to use. Even the tech, which is the next um, 
uh, strategy is also something you can use because see, someone said something. He said, I have, I have gone through a lot. I've sampled quite a number of um, options, but I still go with the fact that word of mouth is still the best. Do you agree? Do we agree? Word of mouth is still the best. Getting recommendations, someone said is still the best bet for him. Ah, someone says yes. <laughs> oh, great. Great, that's referral. I mean, if you have more people referring other people to your business every day, whoa, trust me, you're going places. And of course, that means you must get it right. Your services must be top notch. Quality must be in place. <laughs> I heard someone say something. They said, um, what precisely are you doing to attract more customers? What's your strategy? And the person said, um, well, quality. We work with quality. And then he looked at him and said, that's a dumb option. And I laughed. He said, quality, that's Yes, it is important, but you can't do that in isolation. Everybody is also working on quality. So what makes you different? What makes you different? So we must be able to utilize technology to the point where, uh, you know, we explore digital marketing. That's the reigning thing right now. If you have not gotten your business on the web, you are on a long thing, someone said. <laughs> Somebody said something. He said, as common as oxygen is, it is very important. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if somebody comes up to Mora and tells me that there are now different levels of oxygen. There are different brands of oxygen. That thought crossed my mind and I laughed and I said, ah, that would be a serious matter. But, but do you know this could be true in an hospital setting? I mean, I want us to think outside the box. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. And then when you're looking at branding, sometimes, of course, you see people thinking it's all about the logo. It's all about having a website. But much more than that, what, how, do the, how does the market perceive you? Your customers, how do they perceive you? Guess what? Perception is stronger than reality. So it depends on how they perceive you. Branding and the experience you create. I mean, if I am buying your product, I am not buying your product because I want to buy your product. There are so many other products out there, but what experience are you creating in the process? Very important. Do I live your um, establishment with an experience of a lifetime that I don't mind coming back the next time. I don't mind bringing my whole household. That's when you've started making headway. So I want us to think, what experience am I creating in the market space? Next slide, please. So I like to um, round up with this. It says, you'll never see butterflies socializing with caterpillars. Even the species of nature understand the concept of dissociation after development. Some people are so focused on fitting in that they are failing to fly. It is not um, how well you fit into the setting that stands you out. It has never been. So who are you associating with? Who do you need to begin to dissociate from? What ideas do you need to begin to dissociate from? I mean, this is very, very important. And that's why I wrote the book. It's very much available online for every one of us that want a copy. Now, these strategies I have talked about, I have flown through. In fact, I was, I'm trying hard to keep to my time. I know Dodger should be eyeing me in one corner right now. But you see, these are the strategies that I have gone in depth to explain. So if you need to pick up a copy, don't hesitate. Um, I'll share the link maybe later with her and it will be published and we can all get our hands on it. Trust me, it will launch your business to the next phase because there are so many things we need to understand. We share so much in common with the butterfly and the more we adapt our business strategies to that of the butterfly, the more we will take off like the butterfly. So, so, so. 
Um, <laughs> Tanya, uh, I should call you butterfly Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, let's make it the butterfly lady. All right, let's go for that. <laughs> butterfly lady, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for making it so authentic. It's, it's amazing and uh, there's been so many comments already in the, in the chat box. We have questions already. So um, we're going to quickly take those questions. And of course, as usual, uh, anyone wants to ask their question, Babadi, you can, you can raise your hand. But Tonya, the one thing that I would not forget, you said your downturn is a time of growth, yes. which, which yes. for me is so, so, so critical because naturally, as an entrepreneur, when those downturns come, especially if they are extended, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, no matter what yeah, cost it, right? No, if it is extended, it really mm -hmm. can be, you know, discouraging. And you yes. talked about, you know, going to the market, understanding the value that you're bringing, the, your value proposition, mm -hmm. and also, you know, knowing your customer. I like mm. the analogy about quality. Quality is a given. Everybody <laughs> delivers quality. What are you delivering dif you know, differently? So, I mean, it's, it's, thank you so much, Tonya. You have a lot of positive feedback already coming yeah. in, the, in the chat box. So you may just want to you know, take you. a look there. So I'm going yeah. to ask quickly a question uh, that had come from uh, Mr. Ekanem to define metrics. So help can Tonya help us define metrics you could observe to know when to move from early stage, which is products and markets development, to growth stage? That's reaching more markets and expansion stage. So it's more, what are the metrics that help you define where you are evolving? Remember you showed us four stages and the last stage of which was renewal. How do you know when you're moving into the next stage? Now, if you noticed when I was talking about these different stages, I mentioned the fact, okay, I, I put up some questions that I wanted everybody to honestly ask themselves and answer right here and now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you're able to answer these questions, it means that, okay, fine. In fact, if you said no to most of those questions, then it means you're still in the startup phase. Now, you need to be able to devise a means to push your products out there. Someone said something that um, if your business is still being financed by money you're, you're getting elsewhere, then trust me, it's a hobby, not a business. So the finances, have you been able to drive it to the point where your business begins to finance every of these strategies you are throwing out there? Now, one thing I also want us to understand, which I skipped, is the fact that marketing is not an expense. Most times we put marketing, all the bills um, that comes with marketing into our expenses. No, it's an investment. So you need to tell yourself, if everything I'm putting together for my marketing, say for instance, is $1,000, that means you must target nothing less than $3,000 or $5,000 coming back into your coffers. So the question now is, how well have you been able to drive your product into prominence? What is the acceptance level in the market? How well have your customers embraced your product? What's the referral like? Because that's another um, pointer that tells you if you are actually making pro progress. Now, is every single day different from the other? Can you beat your chest and say that? you are better this month than you were last month. That's why I bring in the idea of going back to the drawing table and assessing to see. And this is something you have to do with your team. It's not something you do in isolation. In fact, I, I am one of the, um, the sticklers for daily meetings. It doesn't have to be long, but you see what happens. The more you rub mine with your team, the more you transfer the vision. Now, I also want to stress here that vision is one of the core prerequisites for growth in business. If you are not able to drive your vision further, if you are not able to drive your, your vision into your team members, then you are already failing. If I cannot wake up any of your team member and they are as passionate as you are, then something is wrong somewhere. And that's why that example I gave the other time about the lady and um, the fruit seller, 
she's doing so well, but how well has she been able to communicate the same values, the same vision into her team? It's, she's already failing in that angle. And I have to bring it open. To, that's why when I work with um, my clients in my coaching sessions, I make you understand, see, the most important thing here is how good is your patronage? It is all about your customers. You need to give attention to this. How good is your patronage? Are people really drooling over your products or your services? How, what, 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 what is, what um, feedback are you getting? I mean, you need to be able to put all this on your social media pages because see, when I'm going to buy something out there, I'm also looking to see what exactly are people saying about this. I don't know how many of you are like me when I go to download stuff from Play Store. The first thing I want to see is what are people saying about this app? You want to check the reviews, which yeah, is standard. Yeah, the reviews. So if they're not good enough, I don't even bother. Guess yeah. what? I could have really, that app could have served me. But because I'm not encouraged by the feedback, the reviews, hey, I'm off. So these are all things you need to pay attention to. If you're able to tie this all together, and of course, your finances are moving forward. Very important. I mean, we're all in business for gains. I know we are actually trying to solve problems out there as entrepreneurs. I know we are trying to bring value to the marketplace, but something somewhere, maybe somewhere at the backstage is the fact that you are in business for profitability. So how profitable is your business? When you measure this from face to face, how profit, of course, you, know, you notice you, as you are progressing, you're beginning to buy other companies. You're beginning to set into renewal. You can't even push for a renewal if you don't have enough finance. Mm. Oh, so, yeah. you see. Thank, mm. th thank, thanks a lot. I mean, you, you hit the nail on the head and the points on, um, you know, moving from one stage to the other or identifying you're moving from one stage to the other. Mm. And not, you know, on top of what you said was that, is, is that you can, uh, you can, as an entrepreneur, define your own milestones. Mm -hmm. What are your milestones at the, at the um, startup stage? What makes you identify that, yes, you know, I am growing? For instance, whether it is number of customers you have or the amount of money that, you know, the customers have been able to bring. It could also even as, as simply be number of downloads because you used an example of yeah. apps in the Play Store and, and the rest. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you predefine those milestones, then you are able to identify the kind of progress that you are making. Because someone is also asking, you know, the parameters and indicators to determine when a business is either growing or regressing. And of course, regressing means you are not able to get customers because you, your business must have customers. And if you don't have customers or you just have customers on your list and they are not paying for your service, then of course, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a regress. And, mm -hmm. you know, the point on, on, on growth is, are we solving problems? And are we able to get value back mm. from those problems that, that we, are, we are solving? What, what are your own views on indicators of whether you're growing or regressing? Simply put, if you're growing, you're making money. <laughs> More <laughs> customers. <laughs> mm. Yes, more, more, more paying customers. Paying customers. And of course, you should be able to move to high paying customers. You see, that's why the whole idea about um, the funnel thing that people are building and crafting into their businesses when you come to um, publishing online and all that, it's all about pulling in people and then, you know, baiting them gradually until you can transform them into high paying clients. Believe it or not, people have the money to spend. They only want to know if you have the solution to give. Excellent. I'm Someone going to should hold on to that. I'm going to unmute uh, Stewart now because he wants to ask a question. Stewart, there you go. Hello, um, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, the butterfly lady. <laughs> good evening. <laughs> okay, so uh, my question is very simple. Um, I want to know what role does um, your budget and available resources be muted? 
No, he's not. Uh, he's, he must be network because I can see that he's not muted. Stewart, we cannot uh, hear you anymore. Uh, in, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now, Dodger? Go for it. Okay. Yeah, so I said, I want to know the role that available resources or your budget will play in developing um, strategies for your business um, as a startup because um, you might actually have great strategies, even most of them might be innovative, but they might need a whole lot of resources that might not be available to you. So what role does budget play? And then um, is it possible to work with um, a low budget to and then execute a very productive, disruptive strategy? Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. I will say one thing. There's a difference between resources and resourcefulness. You can have all the finance in the world and you're not resourceful. You don't know how to infuse it into your business and get the results you need. Now, what is actually hindering a lot of people is not what they do not have, but what they have but do not know how to use. So you need to be very proactive when it comes to your um, budgeting. That's why I made mention of the fact that in the process of innovation and trying different strategies, different, you know, coming up with different ideas, you need to be very sensitive to, to act, even if it's a slight increase it is bringing into your business. You need to be able to understand, and then you need to go ahead to fund those ideas or those um, processes, or what do I call them, that are actually giving you the required results. Now, you put in this strategy, and you discover that your customer base jumped. That means that is something you need to pay attention to. So when you go back to your drawing board and your budgeting, definitely that should get a higher um, claim to the resources on the ground. So it yes. is, it, it is, it is it's straightforward. Yeah, I get it. And, and it's, it's absolutely true, which is that ensure that you're investing where you're getting returns mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and make sure that those, no matter the steps that are, that are delivering value for you, those are the ones that you continue exactly. to put money behind. And you do not put money behind value destroying activities or things that you do that are just massaging your ego. You know, as mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, we do things that, you know, just make us feel good but we are not even able to measure the impact of the things that we're investing behind. So it's, it's important. And you know, one other important thing is about customers and paying customers, right? Because once customers are willing to pay for your service, then it's a compelling uh, indicator that indeed, you know, the business is, is here to, is here to stay and, and there is potential for that business. Uh, Dr. Shegun, I've just asked you to unmute so you can ask your question. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yes, yeah, thank you very much, madam. I always follow your program, especially when I'm in less, when I'm free. Thank and you. I really enjoy, uh, I'm always getting value for your program. I, I just want to me. make, uh, let me commend the guest speaker for today. That's a great job. I just want to make uh, an input or contribution. So the person that asks, what are the indicators that you watch out for, whether your business is making progress or not? Uh, I would advise you consider your working capital. Very important and very germane in business. A lot of us don't do financial projection when we are doing business. You may be making money, really, but... When you are not disciplined with your financial projection, when you are not sensitive to your working capital, in the moment anything happens to your working capital, even though you, you look as if you are, make, you are having customers, if care is not taken, you will soon be out of business. Time may not permit me to talk much on working capital, but I know the person that has a question should have a brief idea about working capital, which is very, very important. So we should be disciplined enough in order to know, to track our inflow and outflow. Thank we should be disciplined enough to have our budget. 
before we do one thing or the other, what do you plan to spend on your daily expenses, on your weekly expenses? What do you budget? In the way you're out of that budget, what do you do? But in the moment you can no longer meet your daily expenses anymore, you should know that your business is falling. Something is going wrong. You can no longer pay salary. You can no longer pay your generator in the office. You can no longer pay NEPA bill. All those little, little things you use money for on a daily basis, you can no longer do them. You should know your business is cracking already. So I'm only adding that point that you should watch out for your working capital and ensure that it's always intact. Nothing touch that working capital. That will enable you to know whether you are making progress in your business or not. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shegun. Free cash flow. Cash flow. Never, ever, ever run out of cash. Thank you. That is, thanks for that, that contribution. We absolutely appreciate it. Tonya, you want to say anything in that space before I take the next question? I'm going to take two more questions, though, because we're fast running out of time. Did you say something? No. Okay, you're on mute. Please unmute your mic. So, um, Amma is asking a question, actually, and it's related to paying customers. And one of her biggest problems is non-paying customers. How does she overcome this? Non-paying customers. Why do you allow non-paying customers? But Tonya, over to you. You're mute, though. Hmm. If you are having more non-paying customers, you're not even in business. I, I think I made that statement earlier on that you're just running a hobby. Because whether we like it or not, apart from the fact that, yes, we're meeting um, the demands out there, we're solving problems, we're bringing value, this thing also needs to favor you somehow. So if you are having more non-paying customers, very soon they will run you out of business because you're not, there's nothing to fund anything out there. Soon, how do you pay staff? How do you pay bills, you know, it's not going to be possible. So see, that means the customers that you are attracting are really not the customers meant for you. It means you need to go out there and source for more customers. That's where the strategy of the customer attraction comes into place. You need to start coming up with innovative ideas to pull in more people. Sometimes you may need to put out some freebies out there to pull people in. Now, I know freebies sometimes could be very um, dicey, but then in the midst of doing that, you are going to also attract several other people because believe it or not, at the end of the day, it, it all boils down to the value you are bringing. If you have the solution to my problem, and I know that by patronizing you, it's going to bring me to the end of the road as far as my problem is concerned, then I don't mind bringing out the money. There's money, there's money in the system. Sometimes we tell ourselves there's no money, there's no, there is money. People are, they only want to be sure whether you are an authority, whether you are an expert in what you're doing, and whether you will bring the solution that they are actually clamoring for so you know email list you need to draw up you know strategies to pull in more people into your email list, serve more people okay. reach out to more people and i believe it will go a long way thank you thank you tonya you are absolutely correct customer segmentation be sure that you are actually you have defined the right customer because if they are non-paying if you have more non-paying customers then truth as you said actually, one, you don't have a business, and two, those are really not your, your customers. So refine, go back and refine your segmentation and do your targeting, uh, make your targeting a lot sharper. We are going to round up now. Uh, Tonya, last words on, uh, on this, on growth plans. What is it that we still have not said that we should, be, should have said? Ah, what is it that we haven't said? Oh, we said a lot already this evening. I think I read that comment already that so many eye popping. Um, well, we've said so much. What I need us to do now, it's not about what we say here. It's what we do. You see, at the end of the day, action 
is what matters. If we can go back and really put in this into our business, I mean, infuse this new energy, this new adrenaline into us, our businesses. Someone said something. They said the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago and the next best time is now. Yeah. So you need to become very, very dogged about your action, about putting into action instantly. Now, I want us to understand something that every idea, every new info that comes your way actually has a lifespan. Have you been in meetings where you had so many speakers, you are so pumped up, you go back and you don't immediately begin to practice these things. And before you know what's happening, you've lost steam. Why? Everything that comes your way has um, a lifespan. If you cannot take action in, within the lifespan of that idea, you're going to lose it. So if you've gained anything this evening, it is time to launch out and begin to practice them. Bring them into your system, infuse them, and begin to practice them. It's very important. Fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Fail. Fail forward. I mean, somebody said that, um, I like to say somebody said, because I've heard so many things. <laughs> so many quotes. I pick them up and I run with them like they are mine. The more you fail, the more you succeed. So he said he's, he's, he's anxious to fail, fail more. I mean, that's quite scary because the truth is that most of us don't want to fail. But remember, even in the midst of your failures, there is growth taking place if you are keen enough to notice. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tonya. Guys, please give Tonya some feedback in the, in the, in the chat room. Please feedback on, uh, on, on today. Please positive words. Well, any, any feedback whatsoever. But Tonya, absolutely correct. Action, action, action. Just do it, right? Well said is not, is not half as good as well done. Well done is what it is. You want to do it well. And the fear of failure, it is true. You know, you said, somebody said, I can tell you that Nelson Mandela said, you do not, do not praise me for my successes. Praise me for the number of times that I get up after I have failed. So yes, we will trip, we will falter, but guess what, guys? You have to get back up again and try again. But make sure you're taking action. Ideas are a dime a dozen. Ideas are all over. But the one who really makes the difference, the one who actually gets any benefit, any accolades whatsoever, is the one who takes action. Somebody asked a question. Have you ever seen that they make a, a, a statue of somebody and they said, oh, this is the man that was thinking about solving poverty? No way. Statues are made of people who actually do stuff. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, go do what you have learned. Go to Echo Eye Center forward slash, echoeyecenter.com forward slash webinar. You will find this presentation. You will find this video. You can download the presentation. You can download the video as well so that you continue to load yourself with the kind of knowledge, information, but most importantly, inspiration. Tonya, you have inspired us. Tech Biz Nation, you want to join the community of Tech Biz run by Eco, Ice, Eco Innovation Center. Go to ecoicenter.com forward slash Tech Biz Nation. That is the community of agripreneurs. <laughs> Did I just say agripreneurs? It's because I was reading to Tochi's message. <laughs> Sorry, don't you see you? You put agripreneur in my head. It is the community of entrepreneurs, of techpreneurs, all right? Join, and uh, it definitely will add value to you. Okay, friends, enjoy the evening. Enjoy Independence Day. Uh, thank you, Tony. I'm sure you've seen all of the fantastic feedback. Tony, someone is asking about your book. Please put the link in there. We need... Um, we need to download your book. We need access to your book. We'll buy it. We'll reach out for it. We will buy knowledge anyway. And uh, thank you, Tonya. Elaborate practical presentation. Job well done. Nice one, Tonya. Uh, excellent presentation. Thank you so much. Excellent thumbs up. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to miss this. 
Great. Awesome. Thank you for inspiring us this evening. Friends, next week, Thursday, again, we will be right here providing you knowledge, information, and inspiration. Have a wonderful evening. Take care, Tonya. Stay safe. Stay safe, everyone. Bye.